General Motors began testing vehicles at its Milford Proving Grounds in 1924. Looking back over 60 years later, some of the test methods used seem a little humorous. The gentleman perched on this Buick is pouring water onto the front tire. The circular track left by the wet tire is used to measure the car's turning radius. That's not very sophisticated, but it worked very well. There's nothing quaint about the testing done at the Proving Grounds today. Set in six square miles of rolling Michigan countryside, the Milford Complex contains 128 miles of test roads. Now these range from high-speed superhighways to bumpy dirt roads. Over 100,000 test miles are logged here every day. The methods and equipment used today are at the leading edge of modern technology. But throughout the years, the mission of the Proving Grounds has remained unchanged. To develop vehicles that satisfy the requirements of GM's customers and the society in which we all live. We're here today to get some answers about a problem that can sometimes be confusing. Torque steer. Torque steer is the tendency of the vehicle to deviate from a straight path under torque. Hi. Now I realize that torque steer probably isn't an everyday complaint, but when a torque steer case does arise, it can be a difficult problem to solve. For one thing, Torque steer cases are often confused with alignment problems. Proper alignment's important, but it's also possible that many of the alignments performed every year are actually torque steer cases. Performing an alignment on a car with a torque steer complaint may do nothing to solve the problem. Could even make it worse. So it's very important that you're able to distinguish between torque steer and other lead or pull conditions We'll show you how to diagnose torque steer and some of the procedures you can use to correct it. But first, let's define what we mean by the term torque steer. Torque steer is a condition in which a front wheel drive car, traveling on a level surface and without steering input from the driver, steers to the right or to the left when throttle is applied. Torque steer also occurs as the throttle is released. From research so far, it seems clear that tires and wheels are the most significant factors in torque steer. So what better place to start our investigation than here at the Proving Grounds Tire and Wheel Systems Headquarters? We're here to meet Dick Gratz, a GM tire and wheel specialist. Well, the major contributor from tires is what we call revs per kilometer or revs per mile. In other words, if one tire is slightly larger in diameter than the other front tire, they'll tend to, uh, under torque, pull right or left. And that's what we're talking about. S small differences in the dimensions of the tire itself. On a front wheel drive car, the same wheels that propel the car are also used for steering. Because of this, it's very important that the front tires are of the same size and type. It's pretty easy to spot when a car's front tires are obviously not the same size. All you have to do is check the information molded on the sidewalls. Also, by checking tread depth and wear indicators, you can often tell when one tire is more heavily worn than another. But even when tires appear identical, there may still be some differences too small to see. Take this pair, for example. They're both steel belted radials, and both have identical markings on the sidewalls. Now, even if we were to take a tape measure and measure both tires, we probably wouldn't find any noticeable difference. But here in the tire and wheel labs, some very accurate equipment is used to measure tires. This is a highway speed uniformity machine. Among other things, 
It measures the radius of a rolling tire under load. The tire and wheel assembly is mounted so that as the large wheel rotates, it drives the tire. A tooth ring is mounted on the hub of each wheel. As the tire rolls, electronic sensors use the teeth to keep count of the number of revolutions the tire makes while covering a known distance of one kilometer. A test speed of 50 kilometers per hour is used. The actual test takes only a few moments. From the information gathered here, each tire size is assigned to revolutions per kilometer specification. Engineers use these numbers to accurately calibrate vehicle speedometers. But what do these measurements have to do with torque steer? The tests show that tires, which otherwise seem identical, sometimes have slightly different rolling diameters. Well, a tire is not a rigid object, and under load is really the way it performs or acts on the vehicle. If you were to just freewheel it and get some free runout measurements, it's really not the way that the tire performs on the car. On the car, we're under load. The weight of the vehicle is resting on the tire. Even very small differences in tire rolling diameters can contribute to torque steer. Let's look for a moment at why this happens. Drive torque is the twisting effort produced by the engine, the force that causes the drive wheels to turn. GM's front drive cars are engineered so that an equal amount of drive torque is applied through the differential to each of the front wheels. Now, say for example, the right front tire has a slightly larger rolling diameter than the left tire. Under acceleration, both wheels receive the same amount of drive torque. But since the right tire is slightly larger, it causes the car to steer slightly toward the side with the smaller tire. During moderate acceleration, the effort required by the driver to keep the car traveling in a straight line may be barely noticeable. However, when hard throttle is applied, the effort required to keep the car traveling in a straight line increases. It may then become noticeable enough to cause a customer complaint. We'll look at the procedure for diagnosing tire-related torque steer a little later, but first, we'll review some of the mechanical conditions that can cause torque steer. Let's review how torque is distributed in Buick front-wheel drive powertrains. Again, torque steer is the deviation from a straight line of the vehicle under load or under torque. What causes it is the resistance that the road is inputting to the tires as the tires are trying to pull the vehicle. As we've seen, drive torque from the transaxle is transferred to the wheels through the front drive axles to provide flexibility for suspension in steering. Inner and outer constant velocity joints are used on each front drive axle. The CV joints do not affect the amount of drive torque in each wheel. On many cars, the drive axles are of different lengths. The axle length by itself has little effect on torque steer. The angles of the drive axles are much more crucial than the lengths. You'll find a more detailed explanation of axle length in the know-how reference manual. CV joint angles do not affect the amount of drive torque applied to each wheel. However, as drive torque is applied to the axles, another twisting motion or secondary torque is produced. Now this secondary torque is sometimes referred to as steer torque. The larger the angle at the outer CV joint, the more steer torque is produced. Seen from above, this steer torque tries to turn the front wheels inwards in a toe-in type motion. In fact, if you could disconnect the front tie rods and other supports, a car's front wheels would turn sharply inward during heavy acceleration. However, the cars are engineered so that when all of the front end components are properly positioned, an equalized amount of steer torque occurs at the outer CV joints. With steer torque balanced at each CV joint, straight ahead steering is not affected. If for any reason the drive axle is not in the proper position, the angle at the outer CV joint is changed. Remember, the greater the angle at the CV joint, the more steer torque is produced. Therefore, if the angle at one joint is greater than it should be, more steer torque is produced at that joint. The affected wheel tends to toe in more than the opposite wheel. 
This causes the car to steer slightly toward the side with a smaller CV joint angle. When drive torque is applied suddenly, such as when accelerating hard, the steer torque produced may be sufficient to noticeably affect the car's steering. Identifying a torque steer complaint requires careful diagnosis. One customer may describe the condition as an alignment or pull problem, while another may simply complain that the car doesn't feel right. It's very important to ask the appropriate questions to find out the exact nature of the problem. For example, a person may be driving a front-wheel drive car for the first time. All that may be required is a little time for the customer to get used to the different feel of a front-wheel drive car. So, ask how severe the problem is. Does the condition affect the customer's ability to control the car? Or is the customer simply unhappy with the way the car feels under certain conditions? Other questions include, when exactly does the problem occur? Does it only appear under certain conditions, such as during deceleration or hard acceleration? Does it happen when cruising at highway speed? And so on. Find out the direction of the pull or lead. Don't forget, road surface can affect a car's steering. Some highly crowned surfaces cause a car to steer toward the shoulder. Determine if the problem is isolated to a particular stretch of roadway. With a full description of the problem, the next step is to take a demonstration drive with the customer. This allows verification of the problem and observation of any conditions that may be a factor in the complaint. When a steering complaint has been established, a full road test should be performed. A carefully conducted road test is an essential first step in diagnosing any handling complaint. Without a full road test, it's difficult to tell whether the problem has been corrected. When performing the road test, Use one of the adhesive labels supplied with each know-how kit to measure steering angle during torque steer. Straighten the steering wheel and attach the label so that the perforation lies between the wheel and the column. Oh, if no labels are available, you can use a piece of adhesive tape. Choose a level stretch of road where you can accelerate the car to around 40 miles an hour. After reaching this speed, shift into neutral. Allow the car to coast while carefully relaxing your grip on the steering wheel. Now, if the car steers itself right or left while coasting, a lead pull or alignment condition is indicated. If this is the case, consult the radial tire lead pull chart in the know-how reference manual. If the car steers in a straight line while coasting, continue with the road test. Stop the car and place the transmission in second gear. Accelerate to 10 or 15 miles per hour. Make a note of any degree of steering correction required to keep the car headed straight at this speed. Then, open the throttle wide and briefly accelerate. Again, note the degree and the direction of steering correction required to keep the car moving straight ahead. Stop the car and write down the results. Repeat this step at least three times until a working average is obtained. With the road test complete, the next step is to inspect the vehicle. Start by examining the front tires. Look for any obvious damage or unusual tread wear. Check that both tires are of the same brand, size, and construction. Also, check that tread depth is about the same on each of the front tires. A difference in tread depth could contribute to torque steer. Check for correct front tire inflation pressures. Pressure of the right and left tires should be the same. Obviously, unequal pressures can contribute to torque steer. If there is a noticeable difference in pressure, inflate each of the tires to the recommended pressure and rerun the road test before inspecting further. If no obvious tire problems are found, the next step is to switch the front tires. While the car is raised for tire removal, make a preliminary front end check. Look for any damage, looseness, or obvious misalignment in the steering and suspension components. Examine the drive axles and CV joints for damage or binding. Check the brakes 
for binding calipers or sticking caliper pistons. When you have finished the front end examination and made any necessary repairs, road test the car with the front tire switched. If the torque steer condition is corrected, no further action is necessary. If the torque steer condition remains unchanged, then a more detailed front end examination is required. You can find all the details in the know-how torque steer reference manual. Now there is one point to keep in mind when examining the car the importance of the correct front drive axle angles. That is, any condition which might change the drive axle angles or allow them to change as the car is driven. For example, if the engine is not aligned correctly, the one axle may be higher than the other. The drive axle angle is checked by measuring the distance between the bottom of the inner CV joints and the bottom of the frame. To check this, you'll need to put the car on a level surface. An alignment rack's ideal. The distance between the bottom of the inner CV joint and the bottom of the cradle should be equal on each side. If the CV joints are not properly positioned, it may be because the engine assembly is not properly aligned within the cradle. If this appears to be the case, loosen the bolts on the engine transaxle assembly mounts. Allow the assembly to settle, and then Retighten the mount bolts to the proper specifications as listed in the chassis service manual. Now be sure that all engine mounts are securely fastened. Excessive engine roll during acceleration is another possible cause of torque steer. Now in some cases, it may be necessary to insert front end alignment shims between the frame and the left hand transaxle mount. Today's Buicks are engineered and built to very high standards. Misalignment problems really don't arise very often. Most times, torque steer can be corrected simply by switching tire and wheel assemblies. But understanding the factors involved and following the systematic approach we described will allow you to cure even the most difficult cases.